Uh, good afternoon, esteemed members on the dais, event organizers, and my dear colleagues. TM uh, International Logistics is a subsidiary of Tata Steel, with Tata Steel holding 51%. Why this is important is this gives you a flavor that we have been into steel logistics for last 15 years or so. And we have done everything from port handling to rail transportation to road transportation to custom clearance, shipping, everything on steel. So, in the eastern part of India, uh, our expertise is in the steel logistics. Now, uh, steel industry, and since we work closely with Tata Steel and other steel players, what we, have, what we feel is that last four or five years, steel industry has been grappling with infrastructure shortage at port and definitely at railway level. But last two years things are so critical that at times you do not have raw material in the plant, you are afraid that your last furnace will shut down or you have inventory piled up in the uh, production center and you do not know what to do with it because the rakes are not available for either raw material or outboard. So based on our experience, so Tata Steel and TMI did something about it. Not that it solves everything under the sun, but still there has been a progressive uh, movement. In year 2010, Indian Railways came up with a policy called Special Freight Train Operations. In short, we call it SFTO. This was meant for niche cargoes. Niche cargoes like steel, edible oil, cement, clinker, LPG, petroleum products, which are decent volumes but not the bread and butter of railway which is tends to be coal and iron ore. So this policy came out in 2010 but and private sector has to invest in it, they will get a rebate in freight but the wagon has to be a special wagon or a high capacity wagon, not the normal run of the mill wagon of railways. So even if you have say a 10% higher capacity wagon you end up, you will qualify as an SFTO player. Now not only that the wagons were not in the pool, which means once you get the rate, the wagons is dedicated to your circuit. They will not be merged into Indian railway pools. So you have visibility of logistics which was missing earlier. So now, <coughs> finally, the first policy came out in 2010, then 2012, then finally 2014. After many tweaks and uh, correspondence here and there, and TMILL inducted its first SFTO rate sometimes in 2017. Rather, we inducted three rates in that year. The other player, which is SFTO, uh, is JSPL. They also have license for steel handling and, uh, for SFTO. So, we inducted three rates in 2017. And today, we are operating seven rates, and another eight will be added in next six months. So. We will be handling close to 2 million ton in a year or so, purely for handling steel, for Tata steel and Boshan steel. So this has been a growing area because the customer finds it economical to deal with the specialized transportation of rail through SFT. Uh, now in SFTO, what uh, railway officials have shown, See how the policy works to advantage and how a private player makes a difference. The initial, before this SFTO, how was the steel coils transported? There was this BFNS design, but I think railway had in total some 500 wagons only. Then you have these coal wagons. So the steel coils were loaded into the coal wagons with all the dunnage and strapping and welding and what not. Because you know, there was no other alternative. So coal wagons will come in, get unloaded, then you will put steel coils in and go to anywhere in India. So the <coughs> special purpose wagon which we inducted has a capacity of about 2700 tons of steel. But the loading was fast because it was designed only for steel. It was a sort of open wagon. Then as a private player, we saw merit in a new design of RDSO which was BFNS wagon M rake which carried 4000 tons of steel coils. So, so you have a rake which was earlier carrying 2700 tons, now 40% higher. So using the same railway infrastructure, you are moving more far. So TMI last year, sometimes in August, September, we inducted the first rake of BFSM, BFNSM 
in Indian railway history. Even Indian railway does not have that design. So all I am trying to say is that uh, Tata Steel and TMI did something to solve the problem and solutions keep coming up. Now we have much higher capacity wagons which are even more economical in terms of transportation. Now, now where is this all leading to? So what happens with SFT? See a company like Tata Steel has a rail coefficient of anywhere between 50 to 60 percent. Rail coefficient means that on the outbound side when you are uh, transporting your finished product, how much of it is carried by rail. So in some plant of Tata Steel it is 50 percent, some rail 60 percent. Ideally it should be around 70, 80 percent. Because rail is actually, uh, irrespective of the cost, it is actually a very efficient medium. It does not congest your highways. And I, I mean one rail can carry 4,000 tons. But to carry that much steel, just see the number of trucks you have to bring in the steel plant. So, uh, this is what uh, has happened and uh, we have been able to increase the rail coefficient of Tata Steel. See, today with uh, 7 rates, uh, once all 7 are fully operation for a year, we should be hitting close to 1 million tons and with 15 rates, 2 million tons then this impact on rail coefficient will come. So SFT as a policy has its own eccentricities, but at the end of the day, it has been successfully utilized. There is always hope for improvement, but uh, we have been able to help Tata Steel to increase rail coefficient through this methodology. Now, the, what is the advantage of SFT? It saves on logistics cost. You get a freight rebate plus the unitization cost, when the coils are unitized, it reduces. So net that there is a gain in it. There is a lower idle freight. Typically in railway rates, you can have 20% idle freight, which is a waste of money. Here it tends to be on the lower side. Depending rake to rake, 15%, 10%. We have even loaded rakes with 0% idle freight at times. Third is, when a rake is running in a circuit, let's say Jamshedpur to Chennai, Jamshedpur to Faridabad, I know exactly that if the rake goes today from Jamshedpur after being loaded, it will come back in 10 days or 12 days or 15 days. So this visibility helps me plan better, which something is not available because if you indent an Indian railway rake, you do not know whether you will get it tomorrow or after 4 days. So this uncertainty with the IR rake has been removed with the advent of SFT. So overall, uh, it has been a beneficial ex experience and uh, we have at least found a solution to the constraint. Now, should we rest on our laurels and as it is? No. The answer is, the SFTO railway needs to come up with even better designs, which can haul more coils in the same track space. It can also <coughs> look at 25 ton balance for SFTO. And the rail connectivity to dedicated freight corridor should be uh, expedited and made 25 ton extra load or even higher. So now, while SFTO helps us in outbound logistics, the inbound logistics is still a constraint. How do you ensure raw metal reaches in time? The solution so far has been that railway has come up with another scheme called general purpose beggar investment scheme where again you can invest in dedicated rakes and carry coal, iron ore and so on. These are normal rakes. You don't have to have specialized rakes. Your box and the normal workhorse of railway will do the job. Now, a lot of us have applied under this scheme and this scheme fortunately has no entry barriers. Uh, but railway has not yet come out with agreement. It's only the policy. So how it succeeds and what will it take to succeed is an unknown animal. But uh, based on our experience of SFTU and uh, with an open mindset of railway officials, I think this also will be a success at least in the next two to three years. We'll have more data to back up our claim. So to conclude, I'd like to say that while there are a lot of challenges in rail logistics, uh, government has enabled us, given us policies where we can leverage and uh, alleviate some of the problems, if not the all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kerr.
and I request uh, call upon Mr. Shishir Nawal, Senior Vice.